Welcome back, pet parents. I am so excited for today's episode because, as y'all know, we have been talking a lot about supplements because you've asked me a lot about supplements, and I get it. It's like a minefield out there, and one supplement or group of supplements, kind of, that is all over the place, it's really, really hot topic right now, is mushrooms. We have a lot of questions about mushrooms, and rightfully so, which is why I'm so excited to bring you Dr. Silver and Joni from Real Mushrooms. Welcome to the Pet Parenting Reset. I'm so excited to have you both here today. Thank you. Good to be here. It's good to be here, yeah. So mushrooms, mushrooms for dogs, mushrooms for cats, mushrooms for humans. I mean, we just, even as humans, we have no idea how to eat and be healthy. Let's be real. Right? And we often overlook a lot of the, the actual benefits of a lot of foods that even though like we can eat them and there's a lot of nutritional benefit, but then there's also a lot of medicinal benefit to a lot of plants that most people today don't have any idea about. And even someone like me who does their best to spend a lot of time learning and researching, it's still like herbalism is a mystery <laughs> to me. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying to add this to my repertoire, but, um, Real mushrooms, I know for me on social media, the ads have been popping up everywhere and people are talking about them everywhere and people that I follow are using real mushrooms. So I was so excited to have both of you on. Would you please, uh, maybe we can start with Dr. Silver, just introduce yourself really quickly so that our listeners know who you are and can trust you. Okay. <laughs> Well, um, I am, and thank you for having us on today, Jessica. It's a great opportunity to to help to educate pet parents everywhere, you know, about the value of mushrooms. Um, I'm a veterinarian um, of over 40 years licensed um, in Colorado, and um, I have a special interest in mushrooms. I um, work for... Um, I work in mushrooms and herbal medicine and supplements. I worked for a veterinary company for 25 years designing their formulas um, for veterinarians and um, joined Real Mushrooms about 18 months ago because I also share this burning interest in the value of mushrooms. And Real Mushrooms really is, um, and I'm not doing this promotionally, really is the, the most of the best company in the world in terms of their production of the highest quality organic mushroom extracts. We both cultivate, we cultivate them. Our parent company called Namex, we're a Canadian company, cultivates them under USDA organic standards in China. Uh, we triple test it. We test everything to ensure that it's absolutely clean. And of course, it meets USDA organic standards. Um, and then we um, we extract them to exacting um, standards to keep the, the potency very consistent from one batch to the next. And we sell them in a variety of different formats to make it easier for people to take them themselves or to give them to their pets. And so I'm kind of a nerd. And I'm just really nerding out over all the amazing science that mushrooms contain. And um, when I'm talking with pet parents, I try to simplify it a bit, but I just, my, sometimes my enthusiasm gets the better of me. And I think the only person more enthusiastic than myself about mushrooms <laughs> is Miss Joni right here. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think we I think we would match each match each other, uh, Doc Rob. You know, I, I've been <clears throat> yeah. We uh, we have our favorite. You know, we might fight over which our favorite mushrooms are, but uh, I think we're both pretty passionate. And yeah, so uh, my background is different than Doctor Silver's. Uh, you know, <laughs> of course, um, I. I got into integrative medicine. So back in 1996, I was I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Um, I'd been living a very like growing up. I mean, I did not take care of my health. Um, I was a bartender. I ate, you know, I mean, <laughs> I ate the burritos out of the Seven Eleven, you know, for dinner on a regular basis, and you know, just didn't really think much about my 
my health. And then um, I developed cancer. And coincidentally, at the same time, my dog was diagnosed with mammary cancer. And so I had, um, I had a surgery, I had, um, I had a, a very, very, very large uh, uh, cancer filled cyst uh, removed uh, along with an ovary. And then for whatever reason, I didn't know anything about integrative medicine, but I turned down all other conventional therapies. And so I had to figure out what to do next. And that's how I entered into kind of holistic medicine first for myself. But then I started, you know, doing the same things I was doing for myself uh, with my dog, uh, Waffles. And, you know, here I am, you know, more than 25 years later. Uh, Clearly, I'm, you know, I made the right choice. I, I was got very lucky. It was probably a very early stage for my cancer. And my dog, Waffles, lived another, I think, eight or nine years. Um, so that really opened me up to holistic therapies. I went back to school to become a registered veterinary technician um, at the age of 40 and uh, then became a, a canine rehabilitation therapist and then got into the supplement business, um, working with veterinarians, te- teaching them about nutrition and herbs back in uh, 2011. And then when I heard that Doc Silver had joined Real My I started to get involved, excited about mushrooms in, uh, a couple of years ago. And when I heard that Real Mushrooms was launching their pet line and that Dr. Silver was going to be formulating and kind of heading up the, the team, I was very excited. Uh, he's such a wonderful teacher and mentor. And uh, so here we are. Yeah. And I agree like w- with what Dr. Silver was saying, well, mushrooms is the gold standard, you know, uh, for mushrooms. And that is the reason. Um, previously, I worked for Standard Process and Medierb, which are also very high quality uh, uh, companies. And uh, I, you know, I looked for the, be- the best mushrooms out there and i very happy with my choice. Awesome. Well, okay. You kind of hinted a little bit, Dr. Silver, that you can get a little too excited and uh, nerd out and kind of talk way over where people are. And I'm just going to have to admit right here, right now that I am that person. I need you to bring it down. Bring it down for me. (laughs) Uh, Because I need to understand the basics before I can really get into like the big picture concepts. And I think one of the things that a lot of people get tripped up on, you know, the average person, because that's what I'm here for, to talk to the average pet parent, is I I know, we know, that we can't just let our dogs wander around and eat any mushroom they find, right? There is a big difference in random mushrooms, especially when we you know, don't have any idea how to identify a mushroom in the wild versus medicinal mushrooms or culinary mushrooms. Can you like explain that to me just a little bit? I can. Um, Mushrooms are, are part of the kingdom of fungi, the fungal kingdom. And we have the animal kingdom, us, you know, and all the animals in this world. We've got the plant kingdom, and we've got the fungal kingdom, three separate kingdoms. And the fungal kingdom includes, you know, um, um, molds and mildews, but also includes the fungi that become mushrooms. Mushrooms play a very important role in our world because they consume dead and dying material and they recycle it into nutrients that the living that living plants or living animals can use. So um, as part of they're very complicated organisms and they and as part of the um, their growth cycle, they produce these very highly active molecules in the mushroom that can benefit health. And by benefiting health, they also can help with diseases. You know, we we don't really say they treat diseases so much as they strengthen the individual so the individual system is able to do that for themselves. So So the mushrooms contain these fibrous elements that have an immune stimulating effect on people, on animals even on animals as primitive as earthworms. They're using 
um, these fibrous materials called beta glucans to help improve um, earthworm farms, you know, for, for soil improvement. Also in fish farming, they're putting beta glucans into fish farming because it improves the growth rate of the fish and reduces disease. Likewise, they're starting to use them in livestock production instead of antibiotics because there's too many antibiotics being used. That's one reason we have so many, um, um, you know, um, bacterial resistant um, infections that are going on. So there's many, many, many molecules in these mushrooms. And so some mushrooms, the molecules they produce are poisonous to humans and could be poisonous to animals as well. Some are very poisonous, but they're only a small percentage of the total number of mushrooms that are out there, but it's a big percentage if you happen to pick one and eat it, or if your dog after a rain, we should be so lucky as to have some rain with all this heat, right? But after some rain, these, the mushrooms come up in the backyard. These could be very toxic mushrooms. And so most veterinarians, the, the, the first time we have an experience with a mushroom is usually when the dog comes in sicker and crap for having eaten some mushrooms in the backyard, maybe on the verge of death. So that's why many mush many veterinarians think negatively about mushrooms, and so do many people as well. Think of them as toadstools and as poisonous, and maybe their parents, you know, frightened them as kids when they would go outside and play, don't eat any mushrooms. So there's this whole, we call this mycophobia, and, and we're here to help explain which are the good mushrooms and which aren't. Now, if you're purchasing mushrooms from a company like Real Mushrooms, you don't have anything to worry about because we cultivate the mushrooms. We know exactly what they are. We've been doing this for 40 years and we know they're safe and we know they're effective. So our recommendation is not to pick any wild mushrooms and especially don't eat them. There are, you need to be pretty expert in them in order to do that. And that takes experience, not just reading a book or using a using an app, but also going out with people who know and actually looking at the mushrooms and learning how to identify them. And if I can just sure. add, um, the general rule of thumb is if a mushroom is safe for a human, it's generally safe for a dog and cat. So if you're looking at culinary mushrooms, for like like Dr. Silver said, you know, if, if there's a supplement company that's selling mushrooms, of course, they're not going to be poisonous. But even when you're in the grocery store and you want to add mushrooms to your pet's diet, um, all of the mushrooms that you can find at, at the, the, the grocery store are going to be safe. Although, as with any uh, adding any new food, you're going to want to do it small, so as, you know, small amounts, so as not to cause any digestive upset. And, and you know, what's interesting, I'm sorry, it just, oh, no, I'm just thinking about the grocery store, <laughs> is that I just read a paper yesterday, even those little white button mushrooms that you get, I mean, they seem so common, you know, you get them on in salad bars, although you shouldn't really eat them raw like they are served in salad bars. There was a paper yesterday about its ability to treat prostate cancer, you know? It's like, yeah, little white button mushrooms. So, I mean, that's that's the power of the good mushrooms, the mushrooms that aren't poisonous, which are most of the mushrooms. And so, yes, you could have, you could certainly go to the supermarket and buy your white button mushrooms. Where we are, we're getting shiitake mushrooms now in our supermarket, which have, you know, very great immune modulating properties as well. Another concern I see a lot is that people are concerned about psychedelics in mushrooms because we just don't know. We have no idea. We're, we, we hear these buzzwords and see people like Joe Rogan, who is, you know, arguably the most popular person in the world. And he talks about taking mushrooms as psychedelics. And so Again, we're not even in that realm, right? Like That's we have no concern here. Old category, you know, and and because psychedelic mushrooms are becoming so valuable, I don't think you're going to accidentally get anything, getting get anything in any sort of mushroom product unless it's labeled specifically for that. And of course, there's legal issues as well as intoxication issues with it. But we are learning even more about the psychedelic mushrooms that. That if you don't use them at the dosage that gives you those trips, you use them at a very low dosage, they actually seem to have some benefit, especially with people who have anxiety or depression, helps with cognition, helps with creativity. I just came back from a conference this past week, Psychedelic Science, and we got, and I, 
I learned all the science that underlies it. And it's huge. I mean, it's really fascinating. But that's not really what we're, we don't do that. We're not, our, our parent company in Canada does have a license with Health Canada, which is the Canadian FDA to cultivate psilocybin mushrooms for medical practitioners in Canada to use with their with their patients for um, psychological benefits. But we, with real mushrooms is not involved in that aspect of it at all. So not to no. worry about that either. But that's a good question, you know? Yeah, but I will add though, because it's, I find it fascinating that I think within the next decade or two, psychedelics are going to find their way into veterinary medicine for the reasons that Dr. Silver mentioned. The, you know, in, in small micro doses can have, uh, I, I think there are actually some kind of underground clinical studies happening around dogs, uh, you know, with PTSD, um, you know, uh, anxiety, aggression issues, things like that. Um, I'm not, I'm not saying we're anywhere near that. I'm just saying that it's not out of the realm of possibility that, you know, <clears throat> on your podcast, you might be talking about this and, you know, in a decade or so, or maybe even sooner. Hey, I mean, dogs with PTSD, with anxiety, with, you know, phobias, I, I feel like pet parents are willing to do just about anything. You know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, my, yeah. Own, my own dog has PTSD. He's a rescue dog. Mm -hmm. He was found actually um, south of Houston in a little town called Alvin, Texas. Um, he had a broken leg, a dislocated hip, kill shelter. And he, so he's got, you know, he's a lab. He's very needy, but he's also very scared as well. And so I'm, I'm actually planning on trying to microdose him. I'm in Colorado where it is decriminalized, so I feel comfortable in that regards. And I wouldn't feel comfortable trying something I've never tried before on another, on a, on a client's animal. I would like, you know, using it on my own, I feel most able to control it. So I'm planning on doing that and, and seeing how it will benefit him. We'll see. I'll, I can report back once we get some, some findings. Yeah, oh, you know, and you're, you're in good company, uh, Dr. Silver, because I mean, it's like Harvard, Johns Hopkins, came, you know, all of these yeah. very, very prestigious um, uh, colleges and institutions uh, are studying psilocybin right now. And I know it's not what this podcast is about, you know, about magic mushrooms, but I think it bears, you know, talking about that um, yeah. to take the stigma away from, you know, uh, it's important because these are, you know, what the with the number of people that are dealing with mental illness and depression and you name it, and the number of pets out there, if there's something that can help and, you know, going back to your original uh, comment, you know, in your intro, Jessica, when you were talking about like not knowing a whole lot about herbs and, you know, what to do. I mean, there's a cure in, you know, the, the, the beauty of nature is that there's a, there are cures out there for pretty much everything that ails us and our pets. And, you know, one thing that I have found to be fascinating is often the cure is very near, like, let's say there's a plant that is poisonous or something like that. The, the, the cure is often very nearby, you know, nature has an intelligence about it. And, um, so these, you know, these plants are here for a reason and these, uh, the fungi are here for a reason as well. And it's fun to work with Dr. Silver to get the word out about how to utilize them, the, the legal safe ones. <laughs> so with real mushrooms, we are talking about medicinal mushrooms, correct? We, we, we're, we're using the term functional mushrooms now, Jessica, okay. simply because the FDA doesn't like you to make medical claims mm -hmm. about supplements and calling a mushroom medicinal is in, inherently is a claim. So we're shifting over to calling them functional mushrooms, which would differentiate them from culinary mushrooms. Although some culinary mushrooms um, also have functional value, like we just mentioned, the button mushrooms, the shiitake mushrooms, which are very tasty, um, but they have great value to, uh, to the health of your body. So how do we, or how do you use them in veterinary practice? Well, there are, well, first of all, the, the, um, I wanted to spell the myth that mushrooms are a drug and need to be used like a drug. We consider them more to be functional foods or superfoods. Mm -hmm. And so their best value is not if they're just used once or twice or for a week, but if they become incorporated into the lifestyle, the daily, the, the daily tasks, you know, that a pet might have. Because the longer you take them, the better they work. 
and even even in something as far as the immune system over time it actually improves immune system response you know a, a month later it's going to be a lot better than after a week on it and it it gets to be so good as far as their immune response that you can even stop the mushrooms for a day or two or for a week or two and you still will retain that same value so it's not really drug like they mm -hmm. have a word for it it's, it's called a biological response modifier which means it's not a drug but it modifies the response of the organism to something. So, so, okay. But that being said, okay. That being said, different mushrooms, all, different mushrooms have different properties to them. They all contain many of the same, um, um, ingredients that have the, the, the health benefits, but each Mushroom has slightly different ingredients, which might have more potency in for different types of conditions. Like, let me talk about my my currently favorite mushroom. I keep going every week. I have a different favorite mushroom. This week, my favorite mushroom is cordyceps, and cordyceps is an amazing mushroom. It's been thought of to be used of over the years, you know, for performance and stamina. But um, cordyceps also has, you know, a number of other properties to it, including um, um, including um, having an anti-cancer property and having an anti-pain property. So if I wanted to use the cordyceps in a patient who, let's say, had arthritis, or let's say it's a, um, a search and rescue dog that what that that needs to have a little bit of a boost, you know, when he's out, out in the field. Or let's say it's even just a pet who wants to go for a hike with, with, with his parent, but needs to have a little bit of a boost as far as um, analgesia or as far as energy. So then cordyceps might be something that we would want to use. Another mushroom, uh, which is a little different than cordyceps, would be... Um, Reishi, Reishi is Ganoderma, and it's a it's a very um, it's probably the it's called the mushroom of immortality, and historically is probably one of the the most prominent mushrooms that has been used by humans for thousands of years. Reishi actually has has ingredients in it that have antihistaminic properties. So if you have an animal or yourself that has allergies, the reishi will have that and will help to reduce the symptoms of it. But the the immune modulating part of the reishi, the beta glucans, will help the immune system to settle down and not be quite as reactive to things like pollen. And we can go on and on. Turkey tail has been very prominent in the minds of many pet parents who whose pets have cancer because of some published studies using extracts of the turkey tail that um, showed a benefit for dogs that have a very nasty cancer called hemangiosarcoma, which is a cancer of the spleen. So, so it goes on and on and on. And each mushroom has its, you know, its special, its secret sauce, its special value. And then you can kind of combine them together. So that's where I'm really having a lot of fun working with this company, which is, you know, first of all, you know, putting together a bunch of educational material because there's so much education that's needed. It's, it's a complicated area. You know, it's not simple. Cannabis was simple. You know, CBD, bingo, you know, but mushrooms, they've got so much in them and each one's a little different. You've got 10 different mushrooms, 15 different mushrooms that all have these values. So I'm not meaning to confuse you, but I'm just trying to give you sort of a wide, a broad brush overview of how we would use mushrooms clinically, but also how a pet parent might, in the absence of advice from a veterinarian, because many veterinarians are just not going to be knowledgeable yet i'm working on it um you know so you know even a pet parent can kind can figure it out they're not dangerous at all there's no toxicity they're safe at any speed you know the worst thing that happens if you give an awful lot of mushrooms is that it costs you a little more but you know some pets might get diarrhea especially if you give them a high dosage right away so um no mushrooms have a great deal of value to use as as a foundation for health you know, in our patients and in our pets. And I want to add to your favorite, uh, I was waiting for you to, to mention it, Dr. Silver, and you didn't, and I know it's near and dear to your heart, cordyceps, um, the mushroom that you mentioned uh, initially is great. Uh, we we re like to recommend it for cats because it's a, a tasty mushroom and it's also cordyceps in addition to uh, having the anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, being an adaptogen, so giving energy. It also has an affinity for the kidneys and also for the lungs. So it's a mushroom that I know 
uh, Doc Rob, that you've been, you know, you've been talking a lot about uh, cordyceps for cats and some of our other conversations. So we don't want to leave the cats out because sometimes we yeah. hear from cat people that <laughs> think we're too dog centered. So uh... I, I didn't want to get, I didn't want to take down quite to that level of complexity. Okay. <laughs> but thank you for bringing that up. And you know, cordyceps. If you've ever, if you like mushrooms, if you like to eat mushrooms yourself, there's two mushrooms. One called morels, and the other are called truffles. And these are prized edible mushrooms. And cordyceps is in the same family as them, so it has a really nice taste. And as a formulator of products for pets, the most important thing, first of all, is is it palatable? And cordyceps is. And so because of its value for the kidneys, because of its value for the lungs, because of its value for the immune system, um, for a cat, it's an easy thing to mix a little bit of powder into their wet food every day. Not much, an eighth of a teaspoon, a quarter of a teaspoon. Our stuff is very, very, you know, concentrated and potent. So you don't need much. It goes a little bit, goes a long way. I'm actually glad you brought up cats and palatability because it inevitably when I am looking at supplements and I, and I am trying to figure out whether it's for my own pets or, or, or for someone I'm trying to help with, with their pets, it's, I know I have a toolbox of all of these wonderful supplements that can benefit whatever is going on, but realistically, what are we actually going to be able to get into this pet? And generally that's a broader <laughs> broader spectrum for a dog than for a cat. It's, it's like for cats, it's like, okay, well, I've got 10 items here and maybe two of them I'm going to be able to get in that cat. <laughs> right. And, you know, and that's the quandary of the, of the holistic veterinarian as well, because, you know, our medicine is based on supplements in part, you know, acupuncture and other types of, you know, things, but, but supplements and with cats, you're limited, you know, and, and that there's, it's a real art to figure out which is the most, which is the most palatable and most important thing to get started with. And you kind of have to do it that way. I also have an approach for, for, for medicating cats that might be good to share here, which is that if, if you, if you start a cat with a teeny amount of a new taste of something and you put it in some really good food, you know, so they're going to eat it. Once the cat gets a little sense of what that taste is or what that flavor is, it is small amount. So it's not threatening to its, its, its fears of, of something new that might be toxic. Then you can gradually start to increase the amount you're giving until you can reach as close to the optimal dosage or maybe actually reach the optimal dosage. You know, cats, livers, they don't do such a good job of detoxifying, not like dogs or horses or humans. And so over the millennia, they have had to evolve to be suspicious about the food they're eating. And if you've ever fed a dog, put their food bowl down, man, they just kind of swoop in, inhale it and go. A cat, same food, same location, same time every day, they still sniff it before they eat it. If you've noticed that, that's because they're comparing the odor because that's the best, you know, most complicated chemical factory there is, you know, in our noses. Um, they're checking to see if there's something new in there from because they survived eating yesterday's meal. So they want to see if they're going to survive today's meal. So starting early, starting with a small amount, I think you can kind of trick them into not being as suspicious about a new taste in their food. That's a very good tip for our cat parents out there and, and me <laughs> being a cat parent, it can be, it can be tough um, as y'all know. So yeah. it, are there, we're talking about mushrooms being a, a functional food. Are there any contraindications that we should be aware of? So like maybe a dog or a cat is taking some sort of medication would there be any instance in which we couldn't add mushrooms in? Well, um, generally, we believe mushrooms are very safe, and there's very little information in the literature. We've recently done a review of the literature. Um, we have a naturopathic physician who's also in our company. He works mostly with the human side, and then we're most of the pet side, but we tried to do a review of the literature to see what really did the literature say about these possible interactions. I mean, there's so many drugs out there. I mean, it's impossible to test for all of them. But in general, what we see is that mushrooms are 
quite safe no matter what else you're taking. We worry about anticoagulant medication because it can oftentimes be very critically important to the health of the human or to the animal. Animals aren't commonly on anticoagulants very, very frequently. So what we, but, and there's always the possibility that there's an idiosyncratic reaction that some animal, that even though it's very safe, one animal, for one animal, it's not. So that's why I always recommend, no matter what, whether they're on a drug or not on a drug, that you start with a lower dosage and you start and you work your way up gradually over a period of a couple of weeks and checking in with the animal's symptoms or whatever it is they're being treated for or inform your veterinarian or take the animal into the veterinarian to be checked for that. Um, but that's, I think that's the safest way to go. So no, there are no specific contraindications, but life is complicated. There could be some problems. Take it slow when you get started, I think is the best advice. Yeah. And I hope this is okay to mention. I mean, you know, because there are, you know, clinical studies out there around this, uh, even with, uh, you know, uh, some pretty significant medications like chemo, you know, chemotherapy, um, mushrooms have been shown to, so, you know, actually support uh, can be can be used in conjunction. So that's one of the things I love about mushrooms is when you have a pet mm -hmm. parent that's dealing with a serious issue, it's not an either or situation. It can be, you know, both can be recommended. And more and more, I mean, Dr. Silver and I are at conventions all over the country that Dr. Silver speaking everywhere. I mean, he, <laughs> well, but you know, you're, I mean, like every veterinary conference, he's speaking at the AHVMA, um, which is the American Holistic Veterinary Medical Association conference uh, in October. He's speaking at a animal hospice conference uh, uh, in September. He uh, has been speaking at different veterinary conferences, like uh, the fetch conferences, uh, acupuncture conferences, and more and more veterinarians are, we've had more veterinarians sign up for uh, practitioner wholesale accounts with real mushrooms than any other type of practitioner this past year. So veterinarians are, even though they're, as Dr. Silver mentioned, there's this mycophobia and for good reason, because they see these animals that have eaten poison mushrooms, veterinarians are getting on board. Um, veterinary oncologists are getting on board. And so if you have, you know, I encourage pet parents, like if you're dealing with an, a serious issue with your pet, you know, uh, you might be surprised if you talk to your veterinarian that they, they, they're becoming more and more understanding about what, what mushrooms are and what they can do. Yeah, Joni, that's a good point, by the way, because um, when you talk about um, interactions, you know, I was immediately going to the bad interactions, but they're actually yeah. good interactions too. Yeah. You know, for instance, like you're saying with chemotherapy, a lot of studies show that with the use of mushrooms, you improve your outcomes and you reduce your side yeah. effects. Oftentimes chemotherapy or radiation will knock out the bone marrow. So you wind up getting anemic or you have too few white blood cells to fight disease. Mushrooms actually stimulate the stem cells in the bone marrow so you can produce more red blood cells. So, I mean, that was a really good point, Joni. Thank well, thank you, Rob. <laughs> so you, Dr. Silver, said a word that uh -oh. I'm somewhat <laughs> familiar with, um, but I think anytime I mention it on social media, everybody's like, what are you talking about? I have no idea. I don't know what this word is. And that's adaptogen. Oh, okay. <laughs> So I'm familiar with it in terms of, of, you know, full spectrum CBD hemp extract, but I understand that mushrooms are also adaptogens and there are lots of adapt, like lavender is it an adaptogen. Yeah. So can you kind of just for, give me like a adaptogens for dummies? What, what does that word mean? <laughs> Some mushrooms I, sh I should add okay. before. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Not all mushrooms. I'm sorry, Joni, what'd you say? Not all mushrooms are adaptogens, only most some are, mushrooms. Most are, Joni. Um, but adaptogens okay. um, is a word that, a re that, that was invented to try to describe the actions of certain categories of plants and mushrooms. And 
it basically helps the body to adapt to stressors. So it, it's or the organ that it focuses on is the adrenal glands, which are responsive to stress and produce the stress hormone, which is called um, cortisone, corticosteroids. Um, so the use of the word adaptogen is, is being misused and overused in our popular language today. Uh, lavender is not an adaptogen. Most mushrooms are, okay? Um, herbs like ginseng and astragalus and ashwagandha, rhodiola, those are considered to be adaptogens. So, um, you know, it's it's just a category. And it's the, the fact that the mushrooms and, and many of these other herbs support stress is a very valuable thing. So, um, um, so that's basically why what an, an adaptogen is. Um, it's questionable. There's a little bit of, there's controversy. I was at this conference a couple of weeks ago, the International Herb Symposium with a vet, with a, with a, with a, with a an herbalist named, um, um, <laughs> um, forgot his name. Sorry. Anyway, he, he wrote the book on adaptogens and I had a conversation with him and he's, he said, we, we're not quite certain yet that, um, that CBD or cannabis really can be considered to be an adaptogen. There's some pros about that and cons about that, but it, you have to see some impact on the adrenal gland and on the, the adrenal pituitary axis in order for it to be considered an adaptogen. So that would be the, 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 the main definition of it. But, but that's a good, pro, a good property that most mushrooms have is you know, they help with stress. They, many mushrooms like lion's mane, for instance, or even ratio and tremella can have a settling effect on the nervous system in which it can re reduce stress, it can reduce um, anxiety and agitation. Um, we have a, I have a product, uh, Real Mushrooms has a product that I designed for them that uses two of the adaptogenic mushrooms, the reishi and lion's mane. And then we combine it with some tryptophan and theanine, which is what gives green tea its zen. Tryptophan, as you know, is a is an amino acid that when you take um, larger amounts of it than your body needs just for, for everyday maintenance, it actually produces serotonin. And serotonin is the calming neurotransmitter. And so it has some, some herbs as well in it, like lion, like um, um, lemon balm and, and passion flower and catnip and valerian, all of which also have calming properties. So, um, so we can certainly reduce stress with those two adaptogenic mushrooms um, using that formula. And I should add that that relaxed formula that uh, Dr. Silver mentioned, cats, many cats will eat it. Um, uh, he was... The wisdom of putting catnip in the chew, I think, uh, has, uh, you know, it's another, uh, another way possibly to get uh, mushrooms into, into cats is with these, uh, these chews that Dr. Silver's talking about. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're, they're kind of dog-sized chews, like, you know, four or four and a half grams, but they crumble really easily. And, and cats don't like the mouthfeel of a really big chew like that. But if you crumble it into little pieces yeah. or even blend that in with their, with their wet food, um, many are accepting of it. Um, yeah. In my household, um, I have two cats, both of whom will accept those chews, um, which is good. So with the real mushrooms line of supplements, where, I, from what I'm understanding, you are taking different mushrooms that you're finding work really well together to support an animal through X. Yes. And blending them together and yes. possibly even other herbs that are going to help support them. So it's not necessarily just mushrooms in the the mix. Exactly. You know, mushrooms, as I mentioned, can sometimes take a little bit of time to build up, although we will see fairly immediate results with lion's mane, let's say, and reishi in terms of their calming. So by adding other herbs or other amino acids or glandulars or things such as that, we can, um, we can increase the potency and maybe increase the rate at which the animal starts to show some benefits from it. You know, tryptophan, it's like almost immediate in terms of what it does. That's why some people will take it at night, you know, before bed. 
So, um, yeah, so that's, and this, I have 40 years or 25 years of experience formulating these products. I did over 40 products for this, this, um, veterinary company over 25 years before I left them for real mushrooms. So I've developed this expertise in that area that, that takes into account palatability, takes into account the ingredients we want to use and uses the right dosages of them, the right amounts of them in the, in the products in order to actually create change because if a product doesn't work i mean people might buy it initially because it's good marketing or it's got a pretty label but if it doesn't work they're not going to buy that second bottle you know and it's the repeat that we're really looking for and and we have a really exciting new product coming out in the next few months that uh dr silver formulated that's going to be a blend of like all the most exciting uh herbs and new you know nutrition nutritional uh uh you know ingredients uh the people are talking about right now. But I did want to add that right now in our current line, we have the chews, which are blends. And we have a product called Five Defenders, which is a blend of five different mushrooms, uh, turkey tail reishi, maitake, shiitake, and chaga. But the rest of the line is single mushrooms. So you can buy a bottle of real mushrooms for pets, turkey tail. All it has in it is turkey tail mushroom. You know, the lion's mane for pets. All it has is lion's mane uh, in it. So we have the single mushrooms, and then we also have the blends, and there are more blends that are going to be coming as uh, Dr. Silver continues to create them. Yeah, I'm just getting started, you know, and we wanted to start by putting the existing products into more of a pet-sized capsule or pet-sized format. Now we're looking at doing these co these combinations, like the product that Joni is is referring to taking way too long. We're both very <laughs> impatient about getting it out into the market, but it will be out there fairly soon. And it's just the beginning of that type of powdered, scoopable meal topper that would have some function as well using mushrooms and other types of ingredients in it. So that's really my wheelhouse. And, and I'm, it's like, I like cooking, but I also like, you know, it's the same kind of in creative inventive process when I um, make these formulas. So it's, it's fun. Yeah. That's it fun is. because we get it. We, uh, Dr. Silver puts the formula together and then we all get little packets in the mail to try with our pets. <laughs> and then we give feedback. You know, going back to that palatability thing. Yeah, so I mean, it's yeah, a. Yeah, I mean, what's the point in spending? I mean, as much money and time you have to spend in terms of creating a product, it's got to, it has to, you know, be acceptable and it has to work, you know, and yeah. it's a pretty high bar. And uh, yeah. we want to make sure. So that's why we, we farm it out to uh, many of our people that work for real mushrooms to find out does it work? Does it taste good? You know, those sorts of things. And then we'll change it if it's not the way we need it to be in order to um, make it better. Well, I appreciate um, both sides of what you were talking about, Joni, because getting just a single mushroom and that's all you're getting in the product can be really beneficial for those people who have a dog or a cat with sensitivities to uh, various yes. items, even, you know, food ad flavor additives and things like that. But then with the blends, we're getting the expertise of yeah. Dr. Silver and in, in, in other cases, you know, other formulators who are putting foods that are pu putting herbs, foods, whatever it may be, amino acids and, and all these different things together to elicit a certain reaction or response in, in the body. And so we get we get the best of both worlds, which is is wonderful. Um, I appreciate that very much. So before I let you go, I heard something that stuck with me and it's from a pretty reputable source. So I think it's true, but I want to ask your opinions of it. Um, it, oh boy. of course, was a, <laughs> of course was a TikTok because where do we get our information from these days? Right. <laughs> but it was, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson. So I think he's a reputable source. And he said that mushrooms are so interesting and are so beneficial to people. He was talking about humans. He doesn't do much with animals. And he said it's because they are so beneficial to us because mushrooms are actually closer genetically to humans than they are to other plants. 
True. And I'm wondering if that is true and if that could be potentially why they are so beneficial. Journey. It's it's 100 percent true. Mm -hmm. uh, humans, humans and animals share more DNA with uh, with fungi than uh, fungi share with plants. We have so much in common with them. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, personally, I feel like this is <clears throat> I mean, mushrooms are going to heal the, the planet. They're going to, you know, they're, they're really, I mean, there's mushrooms that are eating radiation in Chernobyl. There's mushrooms that are, you know, recycling plastic. And, you know, uh, I mean, you know, in addition to all the things that they can do for us therapeutically. Um, yeah, no, it's, that's a true statement. And it's kind of fascinating. It and I'm sure you have more to add to that, Rob, <laughs> as far as the science behind it. Yeah, well, well, you know, what we've discovered is that the animal kingdom and the fungal kingdom both evolved from the same ancestor, same single-celled ancestor. And the estimates are about 30% of our DNA of, of animals is shared with fun the fungal kingdom. That's all animals. So that's a, that's a very true statement. And I do believe that it is probably one reason why mushrooms can be so beneficial. At the same time, I think it's the same reason why fungal infections can be so toxic. You know, I think it's a double-edged sword in that regard. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Okay. But mushrooms are a good way to fight fungal infections. Um, I call it like cures like or fighting fire with fire, you know. Well, yeah, that like, like feeding, like, like healing, like is a, is a pretty foundational principle of Chinese medicine and um, homeopathy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of that in the world that we, uh, we ignore today in our society that I think I, I appreciate people like you who are trying to bring it all back and say, look, we need to come back to nature because she has an answer for everything. Exactly. Right? <laughs> Yep. This is true. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, this is true. And we're, we're in a crisis state right now with yeah. the planet. And mm -hmm. I certainly hope that fungi can heal the planet. Yeah. We need all it's the help good. we can get. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. We do. So Real Mushrooms, it's uh, realmushrooms.com. Correct. Where mm -hmm. people can That's... find the products. Yes. yes. And um, on social media everywhere as Real Mushrooms. Exactly. And I should mention every, <clears throat> the last Thursday of every month. So it's actually today is right. Thursday that we're recording. Um, we do a live Facebook Q and A, a live, uh, on our real mushrooms for pets page. And so that's when me and uh, Doc Rob are just live and uh, answering people's questions. Uh, tonight we're going to be, uh, we get a lot of questions about dosage. You know, how much should I give my pet of this or that? My pet's dealing with this. You know, whether it's a mild, moderate, or severe issue, you know, how should I titrate the mushrooms? So uh, this should be an exciting, uh, an exciting Facebook Live tonight. And then they're all recorded and they're available on our Real Mushrooms website. So if anybody is out there and uh, wants to listen to the Q&As, uh, they're there on our website as well. Yeah, I actually, I really appreciate you bringing up the dosing because it is inevitably like... I, well, I see it so much with CBD, and yeah. now that everybody is aware of mushrooms, they're starting to ask the same questions of mushrooms. Yeah, is it a similar thing? Like, we just got to figure out what works for your. It's it's very individual. Is that what you're seeing with mushrooms? It is individual. It's not quite like CBD, um, okay. but similar in certain ways. I before I became an expert on mushrooms, I'm I was and still am an expert on CBD and pets. Um, but it's it's complicated because a lot of it depends on the severity of the condition, how much you want to use. You know, a lot of it depends on the actual potency of the individual product. And, you know, if we've got, let's say, 10 different mushrooms and we've got three different products for each mushroom that have a different amount in them. So, and then so many different weights for animals, you know, from a little five pound, you know, toy to a 150 pound giant, you know, it's hard to just give a very simple answer. How do I, how much do I give for my pet? And so that's the challenge because the pet parent wants it to be simple. Just tell me, Doc, you know, the veterinarian, well, how many megs per kegs is that, Doc? You know, so got to find the balance point or maybe create, you know, dosing um, 
dosing recommendations on both sides. And, and I don't like using the word dosage because a dosage implies it's a medical product, you know, like a drug or something. So I like to use the word administration guidelines, administration guidance, just because we're trying to be sensitive to the constraints that the FDA places on us in terms of our language and our claims. But it is basically dosage. Awesome. So uh, you're, I guess, providing these this range of recommended starting amounts. Um, but it's important to know that that's a recommendation. And the goal, I would assume, is to use the smallest amount necessary to get the desired result. No? Well, mm -hmm. Not it's, necessarily. You know, it's, not, it's, yeah. it's not really that expensive when you compare it to, to drugs and, and really, you know, expensive drugs. So, and we don't really have precise understandings of exactly how much you need to give to get an exact benefit. And we know they're super, super safe. So yeah. I believe that don't be shaking your head because we'd rather have you give a little more than more. they need than a little yeah. less than they need, especially if you're treating a critical disease. You know, yeah. um, we don't like using the word cancer because that gets the FDA's attention, but cancer is probably the highest calling for mushrooms. And one of the reasons why many pet parents who normally wouldn't think about mushrooms, they get that diagnosis, mushrooms, you know, so, so, um, so yeah, so if, if, if it's, if it's an animal that has something like that, you don't want to make the mistake of giving too little. You know, and so yeah. more, more seems to be better in that case. Yeah, that, that's I was agreeing and nodding. And I would also say, you know, with mo most mushrooms, I, I guess I'm, I'm not a CBD expert, but I think uh, in some cases, uh, CBD is given and not in all cases, but uh, for maybe more acute issues. So you can kind of see you can titrate and see a difference. Whereas with mushrooms, that's not the case. Mushrooms are more they have a more of a long term benefit. You're not going to give your dog mushrooms, you know, and later that day see see a difference, you know, um, unless you're giving like the relaxed chews that you know that have other ingredients in it that might you know have a, have a settling effect. So you know when you're dealing with a a serious illness or whatever because of the safety the high safety of mushrooms. I, I always recommend giving giving more, you know, and of course you don't want to cause diarrhea because um, that, you know, so you want to titrate it up slowly. But um, but yeah, uh, I I believe more the more the better. Okay, and that's because it's a functional food. It's a food, yeah. Sure. It's a whole food basically. Yeah, not just more, but also consistent with it as well. It should yeah. be given on a daily basis. You could, you know, I think once they've been on it for a month, you could probably, you know, skip weekends. And I think you'd be fine mm -hmm. um, once you've yeah. you know, done a, a month of, of every day. Um, that's this training effect that it has on the immune system, um, this yeah. long-term effect it has, this long-term benefit. Um, Awesome. Well, I appreciate you answering all of my questions. I, I try to ask the questions that to you that people ask me the most. Um, so we can we can, you know, get the most benefit out of the short amount of time that we have. But I think this was incredibly educational and informative. And I, I know people who are already using real mushrooms with their dogs and like the product. Um, I, I will be very honest, I haven't purchased it yet, but I'm going to an event next month and I'm going to be getting some for free. So which, <laughs> of, which, which event are you going to? I, I'm going to um, the Nautical Dog. That's why I'm going back to Virginia. Uh, yeah, and I, we just hosting, sent them mushrooms. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I just saw that this morning and they got a huge shipment. Right. And so yep. they're giving anybody who purchased tickets to come see yep. Dr. Judy Morgan speak is getting some real mushrooms. So I'm really excited exactly. to try them out with my dog. Yes. And then in, we'll, in we'll the also be in Chicago and we'll be at the, um, the spa, Carrie Hyde's, the spa out yeah. in, uh, in California. We'll be out there too. Um, Yay. so I don't know if you're familiar with that event, but that's the, the thriving pet expo. We'll be there as well. And, awesome. um, and I'm going to send you, let, let's, uh, let's exchange, uh, get your address. I can send you, I, Rob hates when I use this term, the, uh, I'll send you a poo-poo platter of, uh, of samples <laughs> to try. 
<laughs> to try out. I love it. I say it just to get that look on Rob's face when I say it. <laughs> how about a, uh, how about say, a charcuterie board? Of a sample? charcuterie board. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think okay, that's that sounds better. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate it um, because I. You know, my followers know I am completely honest about everything I post. Sure. Um, if if I like it, if I don't like it, if I, my dog, it's, it's not about me. It's about what my right. dog likes right. or will eat and won't eat or what my cats will eat or won't eat. And I'm just honest about it because I think people need to know. And, and I don't I I don't certainly want to send people down a road where they wind up spending a ton of money and then their pets either won't eat it or don't get the benefit from it. And. Um, that's why, ha you know, having not just the education portion that you're providing today, but also all of the testing um, and, and formulation that you're doing, Dr. Silver, to make sure that it is palatable is so important. So important. But, but what pet do you have, Jessica, so we can tailor um, our little care package? Care package? <laughs> um, I have a dog who is uh, going to be 10 in October. Um, mm -hmm. She's a little, oh, and Bark said Chihuahua and Poodle primarily, but she looks like a terrier to us. Um, and she's awesome. The only issues I have with her are anxiety <laughs> and, um, yeah, anxiety. So we're working on that now. And I have currently have four cats. Um, they're all 14, 15 years old. And, um, and my listeners know Romeo, one of my older cats, who's 15, he has resorptive disease and he just had 17 teeth pulled. <sighs> he only has six left in his mouth and, oh boy, I, it was an ordeal, but, uh, we got through it. You'll, and you'll be happier without those diseased teeth though. Yeah. It'll be less painful. He, he is, he is much happier now. It was, it was a struggle getting through the first five days after it yeah. happened, especially because it was a weekend, but he's awesome now. He's so happy now. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, it definitely sounds like with four cats and cordyceps is, is in the, uh, is, is and, in the future for you. <laughs> yeah. And good news. That's what I sent to nautical, nautical dog is oh, I really? sent, uh, I sent cordyceps, chaga and reishi. Okay. So make sure you get a bottle of that cordyceps, Jessica. Uh, if it's not in your swag bag, you'll probably be able to trade with somebody else. And um, thinking I'll send you some uh, lion's mane. I'll send you the Relax Chews. The lion's mane is great for aging dogs, great for cognitive function, can also have some calming effect. Uh, the Relax Chews uh, would be great also for your dog's you know, uh, anxiety issues. Yeah. yeah. And I'll send oh, something for you too. Oh, oh, believe me, I need it. So, <laughs> I think I spend more on supplements for me than I do my pets, and that is saying something. So, <laughs> well, we make an amazing hot chocolate, not for the pets, but for you. And so, uh, I'll send you some of that to try, which is therapeutic, but is also fun. Yummy, <laughs> yummy, yummy. Well, thank you both so much, sure. and I. Highly recommend uh, all of our, to all of our listeners. Please check out the Real Mushrooms um, social medias. Go go ahead and check out what is going on on their website and see if anything speaks to you. Um, because I know when I go to a website, something always speaks to me. <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah for, I, I thank you for doing the live Q and A's the last Thursday of every month. Uh, put it on your calendar. That's what I have to do to make sure I am there when I need to be somewhere. Put it on your calendar the last Thursday of every month to check out the Real Mushrooms Facebook page. And thank you again, Joni and Dr. Silver. I appreciate you both so much. Well, thank you it's for having me. pleasure. Yeah, really it's been much. fun. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure that you're following the show so you never miss an episode. And please take a moment to rate the show on your podcast app. I'd also love it if you'd share this podcast with your friends and family so that they can benefit from the information to help their pets live long, happy lives too. Don't forget to take advantage of this special discount as a listener today and get access to over 100 online videos and my online dog training the Furry Family Coach. Just go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month
for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to have you join and see you on the inside. Oh, oh.